Hey everybody, it's Craig with Smartphone ME. Today we're going to have a face-off between Nokia's N8 and Samsung's Galaxy S. The Nokia N8 is a quad-band GSM phone. covers all five of the 3G frequencies, 850, 900, 1700, 1900, and 2100. Phone weighs in at 135 grams. Build quality, the case itself, is made out of anodized aluminum. Got the camera hump here on the back along with some nice chrome accents around the camera as well as the camera lens itself. Also a nice chrome accent around the dedicated camera key and volume rocker. The Galaxy S Quad Band GSM Tri-Band 3G weighs in at 118 grams. Build quality, you've got a nice gunmetal gray rim around the entire perimeter of the display. The back battery cover is made out of a rubberized plastic. You've got a nice chrome metal accent here around the camera. On the Nokia N8, taking a look around the phone on the bottom is the power port. On the left hand side is the micro USB port. Got your doors for your SIM card slot and your micro SD card slot. On top is 3.5mm headphone jack. In the middle is the HDMI port, which you can see right there. Next to that is the power key. On the right hand side is the volume rocker up and down. Lock and unlock key and dedicated camera key. Looking around the Galaxy S on the bottom is the microphone, left hand side is the volume rocker, on top is the micro USB port, next to that is a 3.5mm headphone jack, and then on the right hand side is the power and lock key. Alright, on the back of the Nokia N8 you've got a 12 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss Optics Xeon Flash, also offers autofocus, face detection, as well as geotagging. Video capture is 720p at 25 frames per second. Also has a VGA front-facing camera for video calls. On the Galaxy S, you've got a 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, face and smile detection, touch focus, as well as geotagging. Video capture is 720p as well, but at 30 frames per second. It also has a front-facing VGA camera for video calls. Underneath the battery cover on the N8 is an internal 1200 milliamp battery rated at 5 hours and 30 minutes of talk time on 3G. On the Galaxy S you've got a 1500 milliamp battery rated at 6 hours and 30 minutes of talk time on 3G. Take a look at the displays. Alright, the Nokia N8 offers a 3.5 inch AMOLED capacitive touch display showing 360 by 640 pixels. Stay with me. There we go. Offers multi-touch accelerometer sensor as well as a proximity sensor. Just below the display you have your main menu key as well as the microphone. On the Galaxy S you've got a 4 inch Super AMOLED capacitive touch display showing 480 by 800 pixels. It also offers multi-touch accelerometer sensor and a proximity sensor. And below the display you have three touch sensitive keys, a back key, a home key, as well as a main menu key. As far as memory, the Nokia NA comes with 16 gigabytes of internal storage. 256 megabytes of RAM, 512 megabytes of ROM. Internal memory can be expanded in additional 32 gigabytes to the use of micro SD cards. The Samsung Galaxy S comes in two versions, an 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Also offers 512 megabytes of RAM, 2 gigabytes of ROM, and again memory can be expanded in additional 32 gigabytes to the use of micro SD cards. As far as Wi-Fi, both of the phones offer 802.11 BG and N. The Nokia N8 also has Nokia's UPnP technology. The Galaxy S offers support for DLNA. Both of the phones have Bluetooth 3.0 with support for A2DP. Both of them offer GPS with support for AGPS. The Nokia has an HDMI out. The Samsung Galaxy S has a TV out. As far as acting as a Hi-Fi Wi-Fi hotspot, easy for me to say. The Nokia N8 doesn't offer that. The Galaxy S can tether up to five devices simultaneously. As far as processors, the Nokia has a 680 megahertz processor. The Galaxy S has Samsung's 1 gigahertz Hummingbird processor. As far as operating systems, the Nokia N8 runs on Symbian 3. The Galaxy S runs on Android 2.1 Eclair with Samsung's TouchWiz 3.0 UI overlay. Let's take a look at the map applications on both handsets and then we'll do a little navigation. Um, I've got the red dot on the N8 is current location, the blue arrow on the Galaxy S is current location. One thing that's kind of neat on the N8 is you move around on the map 
wherever the indicator is down here in the middle it'll give you the address up at the top the other thing that's nice is the red marker on the main screen will immediately find your location again you can do that on the Galaxy S it's not a big deal but you do have to open in a menu to do it so it's a little more convenient on the N8 and take a look at map flow redrawing on the Galaxy S and then map flow and redrawing on the N8 let's go into take a look at satellite view on both and you can see it redrawing in satellite view there's the N8 redrawing in satellite view move over the ocean that should be easier All right, let's go to the terrain view and take a look at that on both. And it tells you also the direction of your location up here along with the little red dot as far as getting to it, which is kind of nice as well. There's a terrain view on the Galaxy S and it does seem to be a little bit smoother when scrolling and it also definitely seems to redraw quicker alright let's go back to navigate to someplace different we're actually going to go to McDonald's I've got them both loaded so we'll start out here we'll go to search McDonald's alright we've got McDonald's tap on that navigate and there we go We're going to have to wait for 500 feet. Turn right at Instant Port. Okay, so that's navigating on the Galaxy S, and that started from scratch. Uh, if you notice, the GPS marker wasn't up there, or icon wasn't up there in the top uh, notification bar. So that started from scratch and grabbed it and locked on it. Um, let's do the same thing on the N8 and drive. Set destination, history. There's a McDonald's. And again, it's drawing the route. And once the GPS locks, you'll get voice guided turn by turn navigation. And that's the problem I've been having with the N8. The best I've been able to do in the couple days I've had the handset, see, no problem drawing the route. It's waiting for the navigation. And it's too bad I've got Surfer Dude on there as a navigator. And the best I've gotten from him so far is that the GPS is whack, dude. Uh, so I was really looking forward to him navigating. But uh, that's been the issue I've had with Nokia N8 is getting him activated and getting it to lock. So anyway, there's a look at navigation and the map application on both of the handsets. All right, start running our unofficial speed test. And we'll try messaging, gallery, music player, and camera, and then the web. So let's start out with messaging. Here we go. All right, let's try the gallery. And the Galaxy S is still loading images, but it's got a SD card in it, so it's definitely going to, the part's going to take longer. Let's go to the uh, music player on both. All right, let's try launching the camera. Okay, let's launch the web browsers. They're both hooked up to the same Wi-Fi network. And the N8 is done. So there's a look at the unofficial speed test between the Nokia N8 and the Galaxy S.